Assalamu alaikum everyone. So lecture number 25 and we will resume our previous review and recap of the underlying chapter that is coding and error control. Moreover, we will be focusing on turbo codes and at the end of this lecture we will have a simulation tool that is NS2. So we will talk about uh, the introduction and the purpose of NS2 and why we uh, are interested in using this tool uh, in the context of this course. So let's start and these are the bullets which we will be going through one by one. First of all CRC we will resume from the last CRC algorithms algorithms, and then uh, ECC block ECC and then we have uh, convolutional code and uh, after that we will be talking about turbo codes in more details actually when we mix block and convolutional encoding so we uh, can say that we are using a uh, special code that provides uh, data rate very close to the channel limit and it is turbo code as uh, the result of the feedback uh, being used in the turbo engine so that's why we are having the name turbo code. Then uh, finally we will be talking about NS2 which is uh, Network Simulator 2 and we will be uh, talking about the uh, requirement of NS2 and uh, what is NS2 and then after that we will uh, try to go through the installation steps uh, on uh, different operating systems on Windows and on Linux variants. So let's start so uh, as mentioned that we will resume our uh, review questions. So our review question is we have to list three different ways in which CRC algorithm can be mentioned, right? So here we have CRC. So as we all know that uh, it's when uh, we have burst errors, so they are undetected by simple parity check. So this is the bottleneck for the so this uh, bottleneck can be uh, addressed by using some other code and that is the CRC. So CRC you can see we have data and then uh, frame check sequence and uh, you can see k number of original data bits and n minus k number of bits in the FCS. So this is the additional redundant, redundant bits and here we have defined the uh, data redundant bits and we have calculated the divisor so there are different uh, methods uh, that can be used in order to calculate the divisor so there are three different ways to generate CRC code first modulo 2 automatic by using modulo 2 automatic polynomial method and digital logic method so we have gone through this method before so here you can see that uh, this is T to raise to power n minus k into d plus f data plus uh, this is the frame check sequence right so you can see data and this is f right and so here uh, is the methodology how we generate CRC so you can see that we have data f that is uh, frame check sequence and then we have quotient and the divisor is uh, represented by p so uh, if this is correct f t should now divide p with zero remainder if the remainder is zero on the receiver side so it means that data is received correctly and exactly and if uh, the they, we got some remainder so it means then uh, that there is some problem and we have to uh, take some corrective actions in order to retrieve or receive the data correctly and exactly. So here we have the example for modulo 2 automatic method. So you can see uh, data and this is P that is divisor and we have to find the FCS field. Uh, so uh, you can see that the, now the total size of the frame is 15 bit if we look at the data original data 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 bits and it means 
we have added five more bits right so this is the actual data and this is the you can see checksum that is generated by using modulo 2 automatic right and this is the way out how we tell this is remainder and this is the quotient and this is the divisor okay and we have another example so there are chances that uh, we are not able to detect error even by using CRC EB the n bit number with a bit one at the position of each error bit error occurring in T error occurring in T causes bit reversal is obtained by ZOR uh, we uh, can obtain bit reversal by ZORing with ones all ones so receive TR is equal to T ZORed with E so you can see error is missed not detected if TR is divided divisible by P and since T is made divisible by P this requires that E is also divisible by P but that is uh, unlikely to happen so we can use also polynomial method right a k bit word d can be expressed as a polynomial of degree k minus uh, 1 in a dummy variable x with being uh, the bit values the power of the x being the corresponding power of 2 right so you can see uh, we have if you look at this example right so we have 8 bit word data d and you can see uh, we started from 0 let me write down over here uh, so I will select the pen and uh, ink right so let me write down over here so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so uh, the corresponding bit that is 1 I will be writing down so plus x6 so I will omit x5 plus x4 plus x3 I will omit those two because uh, they are 0 so I will be writing 1 so uh, we actually are ignoring the polynomial terms corresponding to 0 bit in the number right so here we have another example uh, x4 dx equal to right so you can see we have multiplied the data with x4 that is again so we'll get the polynomial the equivalent bit pattern is right so if I have to represent the bit pattern for this right so it means uh, 1 right so 1 10 and then we have a 0 9 is missing so it means we have to put 0 at the 9 position right so let me write down uh, the 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 so you can see 9 is not there so we have 0 over here and then uh, 7 and after 7 we have uh, 5 missing and 6 missing and 5 missing and we have a x4 so that's why we have 1 and then we will be putting rest of zeros because we don't have any thing uh, after x4 right so then we have another example where we have uh, multiplication and now we have addition also right so you can see x4 into dx plus right so we can obtain the bit pattern in this way so this is the uh, CRC generation by using polynomial way so binary arithmetic so this is uh, the binary arithmetic and this is the polynomial right so you, you can we have mentioned mathematically the poly, polynomial methodology x raised to power n minus k into dx plus fx right so can see quotient plus fx over divisor shift pattern uh, bits to the left so we need to use uh, shift registers uh, that is perform the multiplication divide the new pattern by the divisor p of x of the division rx is taken as uh, frame 
check sequence the frame to be transmitted is right so this is the frame that has to be transmitted so here we have the example of the polynomial right so you can see uh, we have mentioned the numbering 0 1 2 to 9 and this is the uh, data and here we have the divisor right and solution is we have data polynomial uh, by using polynomial method and here we have the divisor right so you can see same uh, x5 x4 x2 and 1 right so let me place uh, for the 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so you can see uh, x5 will be there x4 will be there and we'll be having x care and one right and then we have to uh, use the formula that is the formula x raised to power n minus k so n is 9 right and right and here we have uh, x5 into dx right so if I to dx plus FCS right so we are using the formula x5 dx or px right so if I go back right x5 dx over px right and then uh, we will be having the remainder right so that is the remainder x3 plus x2 plus x right so that is f right so here we have the example so how we uh, are going to choose the divisor right divisor p on the type of errors that are likely to occur in our communication link right error pattern uh, will be undetectable only if it is divisible by px so all single bit errors if px has two terms or more right all double bit errors are detectable if px has three terms or more any odd number of errors if px contains the factor x plus one so you can uh, you have to be careful whenever we are going to use the divisor so here some of the applications of CRC so we have different uh, schemes CRC 8 and CRC 10 are used in ATM CRC 12 is used for transmission of 6 bit character it's uh, for a frame uh, checksum length is 12 bit CRC 16 and CRC and CCITT are used for 8 bit characters in the US and Europe and then we are using CRC32 in IEEE wireless standard 802.3 and here we have used digital logic so you are looking different uh, ZORs blocks right so k is equal to 10 and this is the uh, size of p size of the divisor and this is the size of if you can see checksum and n is 15 five elements left shift register right so because we have five size of FCS initially loaded with zeros after left and left shifts register will contain the required FCS right so here is the example CRC at transmitter so CRC at receiver okay so there are some problems uh, okay and you can go through those problems by yourself and then we uh, of course uh, uh, our desire is uh, that we after the detection of the error there should be some error correction mechanism uh, so uh, two, uh, uh, there are two alternatives in order to correct the error RS asks for retransmission of the data for the frame that is uh, that ha is having error data link protocol such as HDLC and transport protocol such as TCP a uh, backward error correction BEC method RX attempts to correct the error enough redundancy exists so if we are carrying more information in order to correct the error so we can uh, introduce the protocol like 
BEC, backward error correction, and uh, the transmitter uses block coding to allow RX to correct potential errors, FEC, forward, forward error correction method, right? So it is used in voice over IP applications. So here we have uh, compared error correction var versus error control. <coughs> so now uh, we have discussed uh, all the CRC algorithms. So there are three different algorithms that are being uh, used for CRC. Modulo 2, and then we can use polynomial. And finally, we can also introduce digital logic, where more digital logic design concepts are involved whenever we have to use CRC, right? So here we have the uh, question that uh, is it possible to design an error correct uh, error, uh, control coding that will correct some double bit errors, but not all double bit errors? And what are the reasons that if this is possible, and what are the reasons if this is not possible? So first, uh, the AS, uh, we can do that. So you could design a code in which all code words are at least a distance of three from all other code words, right? O allowing all single bit errors to be corrected. So this is the condition, necessary condition, in order to have that. Uh, some but not all code words in this code are at least a distance of five from all other code words. Then for those particular code words, but not the others are double bit error, right? So single bit error, multiple errors if the codes, uh, they are uh, lying at a distance of three from all other code words, right? And in case of the double bit error, so the condition is that they should be five bit uh, apart from each other. So this is the condition. Then we have in an NK block ECC, right? What do N and K represent? So as we uh, have studied again and again, that block code encodes K data bits into N bit code words. So N is the total length after encoding, and K is the course k data bits data bits right so convolutional course what to n k and right so input data k bits at a time and uh, produces an output of n bits so this is the total length of the uh, code word for each incoming k bits the current output of the n bits is a function of the last k cross k input bits okay so now uh, we are going to uh, talk about turbo codes. So uh, let's define the goals. So first we will uh, having again a recap why we are uh, interested in coding, then error correction, detection, and uh, we will be going through some basic terms and concepts and how we can handle certain noise issues. Right, so uh, there can be a situation where uh, data is transmitted over a noisy channel. So in order to resolve this issue, we have to add some redundant information. So we have check codes and uh, we have error detection codes and error correction codes. So uh, if we talk about the transmission, data is digitally recorded. So most of the time when we have to record the data, we record it digitally and uh, we want that it should be compressed. So encoded by error control coding, modulated from digital data into an analog. So of course, if I want to uh, transmit the data, so I have to modulate by using certain carrier. Then if we talk about the uh, reception or receiver, so analog, analog signal is received and demodulated back to the digital data. Because as mentioned, we want that the data is converted into digital data, right? Uh, whenever we have to store it, because there are a lot of different advantages of storing the data digitally. So we can compress it. And there are a lot of different media that is available where we can store a huge amount of data on uh, the disk. 
processed in the error control decoder uh, redundancy is used to check for errors and correct them okay so here is a scenario where we have tried to explain the transmission process with coding right so this is the application layer so we can use different source coding in order to get the data uh, compressed or we can use uh, the uh, suitable data representation for example we are using jpeg source coding in order to represent still images right and then we have uh, using uh, we uh, are using channel coding uh, convolutional or turbo cores and finally we have to modulate right so the channel coding is uh, to add some sort of redundant information so that the on the receiver side if there are some errors uh, then those errors they can be detected and corrected and then we have the modulation for example I have to transmit the data uh, at a large at a long longer distance so uh, what I will be doing I will be using a particular carrier uh, by keeping in mind the available channel, the characteristics of the channel and the impairments that the channel is offering or uh, having, then after that I will be performing the modulation, right? So uh, you can see I will be making the data compatible with the underlying, underlying channel where the data has to be transmitted. And this is the transmission side. So, for example, you are going to transmit a video. So, I will be using MPEG, right? So, then, uh, for example, I am using Turbo Code in order to uh, perform the channel coding, and then after that, I am using, for example, binary phase shift keying or some other modulation scheme, depending upon the type of the channel, right? And then uh, we will transmit the signal. So, in between, we have the channel that can be the free space. Uh, or it can be guided media or unguided media, right? So uh, those processes that are performed in this order, source coding, channel coding, modulation, at the transmitter, so they have to, have to be performed or followed on the receiver side in the reverse order, right? So it's the same whenever we have to send an envelope, right? So we are, uh, the steps which we are following like we have we will be writing the letter and then we will be uh, enclosing the letter in into an envelope then finally we are uh, writing down some address or maybe we are after the address we actually are uh, pasting some of the stamps right and then we will be delivering that letter uh, at some post office right so so those steps are being performed in the reverse order right so first uh, the, the post office will be putting some stamps uh, that you actually have uh, pasted for a fee, right? So you have to pay something because you want to uh, send that packet at a long distance or maybe uh, overseas. So uh, then after that, uh, they will sort out the letter by looking at the address. So this is the second header. Right, so that header we have placed second last. Right, so then uh, of course when the let letter will be delivered at its destination by using its address, that is uh, a block or a header, and after that uh, the uh, letter will be opened. Right, and this is the removal of another header, or you can say that the process that is being performed on the sender side so it is reversed over here so finally the data or the actual data or the actual letter will be uh, read out and the recipient will be having its message or data right so the those steps are being performed in the reverse order right so here we have the channel decoding right so if there are some errors so those errors are being detected first and then corrected uh, afterwards if uh, the system have the capability. And then finally, uh, we if we are using MPEG uh, encoding and for example, in, in case of video clip, so those uh, uh, encoded MPEG encoding has been used here. And here we have MPEG decoding over here in order to visualize our video clip. So 
these are the steps that involve. So there is a uh, certain uh, data, right? So if when we talk about uh, voice video data, and there are some other services which are quadruple services, triple play services, a lot of other services. So today the trend is that all services has to be con converged onto a single platform. So I wish, I want that my cell phone should be uh, providing data services or my carrier, uh, in other words, right, should be uh, providing me data services, it should be providing me voice services, video services, and triple play services, and quadruple services. So all the services, the, the uh, trend nowadays is that they ha has to be converged on a single platform, right, or to be provided by a single carrier or to be supported by a single cell phone or there should be apps uh, that should support uh, data, voice and video. For example, I'm uh, sending some uh, messages by using some chat application so I know I want that now I should start some sort of voice conversation. So I, using the same application I should be capable of uh, using the voice conversation and if the end parties are not satisfied, say they want to s start some video conversation, so they should be uh, capable of starting the video conversation. So the trend is, so the all uh, pressure is on the developer that is developing the application, and then if you go down, then we have the protocols that has to transmit all the data uh, uh, by using the same resources and then if you go down the physical layer and then the technologies that are being used so uh, this uh, is the message that all the services uh, has to be converged. So here we have uh, shown the sensitivity of errors when we talk about the media right so we have voice right so it is uh, there is a low sensitivity for errors because we have certain sort of codecs and then uh, if we have some voice that is missed in between so there are certain uh, algorithms that can be used in order to retrieve that uh, data. Moreover we can understand because why voice is exchanged between human beings and even we are uh, talking real-time voice or maybe the offline voice so we can understand what is uh, in between. On the other side if we're talking about some video right so again low sensitivity because I'm talking about the uncompressed video right because uh, if there are some uh, frames that are missing so if uh, there's no uh, nothing important within those frames so uh, we can so it can be a loss right so on the other side if we talk about the compressed voice voice so by using some, we are exchanging voice messages between end parties by using some sort of uh, compression and we are using some codec. So in that case, uh, we, this data is highly sensitive to error, right? And then compressed video again, high sensitivity and data again, high sensitivity. And then we have a repetition code, uh, information sequence, code word, right? So you can see, uh, we repetition code code rate is 1 by 2 so we have 2 bits so code rate is 1 by 2 bandwidth increases right so we have to send a lot of redundant data and uh, of course this will decrease the information rate right so channel coding channel core transmitter power is irrelevant no noise in the channel best case channel coding channel limit Right, so there is a limit, and uh, because in when we talk about the Shannon, so th you in the Shannon limit, Shannon theorem, you see that we have only considered the thermal noise that is represented by Gaussian. Right, so turbo cores are very close to Shannon limit. So th there are some uh, parameters which we have to take into account when we talk about the code performance, bit error rate any particular bit being in error in a transmission. Then, of course, this is very important element, uh, signal to noise ratio, channel power to the noise power, right? 
best case low uh, this is the best scenario we can have low bit error rate and low SNR less so here we have different coding schemes and their comparison right so you can see uh, the signal to noise ratio and the bit error rate right so it's the, on the higher side and uh, the signal to noise ratio is also on the higher side if no coding is used and then here we have a turby and turbo right so this is the sham channel limit right so turbo cores are very close to the channel limit block codes for so we have different types of codes block codes uh, where we are, are actually having different blocks of the underlying data that is uh, that is going to be encoded then convolutional code here we use a serial uh, sort of uh, representation or transmission and then uh, the turbo codes they actually are based on both block and convolutional codes right if uh, we talk technically and uh, we consider uh, the technical uh, characteristics though it's a block code uh, like both block and convolutional code right so Hamming code take a block of length k encode them into a code word right so uh, we all know say so 2d mapping so here we have convolutional codes continuous or streaming code and uh, Viterbi and soft output Viterbi are the most common, right? So you can see we have turbo codes mixed between convolutional so and block codes. Block code, however, they use SIF users like convolutional codes. So here is the uh, turbo codes encoding. Most common uh, is the parallel concatenated convolutional codes produce high weight code words. Interleaver shuffles the input sequence so. Inter interleaval actually is shuffling right the input sequence in such a way that it produces a high weight and then if we talk about the decoder because decoder side is always uh, the challenging part soft output decoder soft output uh, uh, sign a probability to uh, decode information one with 80% uh, likelihood outperform hard decision algorithms uh, map maximum a posterior right and this is the iterative process uh, data input and you can see the iterative process right so here we have the turbo decoding until certain conditions are met the decoder circulates estimates of the send data like turbo engine circulates air within the engine right so once the decoder is ready the hard decision is made so uh, one key uh, point is that in case of turbo code it uses intrinsic and uh, extrinsic information alongside uh, as opposed to some other big, uh, encoding and decoding protocols right so in intrinsic information coming from the channel and extrinsic information that the decoder adds to the intrinsic to perform its correct operation right so here you can see the uh, so with Turby right uh, you can see this is uh, original data and this is the received data noisy right so after applying some sort of uh, encoding and decoding schemes uh, for example Viterbi so you can see the, that the uh, we are uh, there is some improvement but if we compare this with the turbo code we can have better improve better picture as opposed to this Viterbi right so uh, here are some of the uses of the turbo cores it, they are being used for cell phone communication satellite communication because of the power issues and then dial up communication and then certain RF communications so uh, now let's talk about some of the simulator right so first of all we have to establish that why we uh, need simulator and then we will be talking about uh, the simulator uh, which we are going to use right so let's start that whenever we talk about the communications right so we have a source we have a uh, sink and in between we have the channel 
right? So we have to send data and receive data, and then there are certain parameters, certain uh, characteristics that are very important when we talk about the communication, right? So in order to design a uh, certain uh, communication system, or evaluate certain communication system, or maybe uh, to evaluate certain s uh, communication scenario, we cannot go uh, for the practical solution all the time. So we need some sort of software so that we will be able to evaluate, not uh, in the real-time uh, scenario, but very close to the real one, right? So in that ca case, we need some sort of simulation or maybe in some case, uh, emulation, right? So uh, what we will be going to do, we will be thinking about some communication scenario, and then we will be uh, uh, creating that scenario by using certain software uh, onto our computer and we uh, actually evaluate this uh, certain parameters. For example, I'm interested in delay, jitter, packet loss, and bandwidth. So I want to evaluate that if I'm going to design a certain protocol, so what is the throughput that protocol is providing? Or for example, if I, I'm using uh, certain error correcting, uh, error detecting and error correcting scheme uh, under certain communication scenario or under certain communication system. So what is, uh, what, what is uh, the throughput in that case, right? So these sort of uh, questions can be answered by using some sort of software and, and then we are actually uh, developing the scenario and then maybe we have to add some code by ourselves, right, in order to uh, do that. So this is the uh, requirement. So we are actually interested to evaluate certain metrics, certain parameters, certain scenarios uh, in order to uh, have better uh, wireless and communication infrastructure or maybe protocol, or maybe uh, encoding, decoding scheme. So we, are, we will be using some software uh, onto the computer, because this is not possible that we have, we practically establish the system. And then if I need to change certain parameters, so I want to change the bandwidth of the channel, so I, 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 I'm uh, physically changing the media or maybe uh, physically up changing the endpoints in order to accommodate certain changes. So this is not possible all the time, right? So I will be using some software uh, by using some computer, then I will simulate. The, so my results are very close, or if not uh, very close, so you can say that they are 60, 70, 80% close to the real-time scenario. Or maybe in worst case, uh, we can accommodate uh, 50, 60%, right? So let's uh, talk about NS2, that is actually Network Simulator, and we are uh, going to use is two dot some uh, version. So it's a package of tools uh, that simulates behavior of the network, right? So there are two different uh, characteristics when we talk about the communication or the network. First is the behavior and the second one is the communication, right? So let me give you an example that uh, if I have uh, a router that is uh, at the edge of a company, right? So uh, the company expands, and after some time, this router that is lying at the edge, right? So at the edge of uh, a company, the behavior of the router should be different right so now the company expands and now that router which is which was at the edge so now it, it becomes a router within the core right so if you can imagine and you can uh, uh, have some sort of analogy that uh, a person sitting at the edge uh, at the entrance door of a company should behave differently if he's uh, in the middle of a company right so his his behavior has to be changed so there are two different uh, important uh, mechanisms. First is behavior, and the second is the communication. So behavior, of course, uh, you have to adopt, adapt accordingly. So routing, router at the edge should behave differently if the router is situated within the core. 
but the communication can remain the same right so the communication at the edge router is uh, routing packets and the incoming packets is uh, delivered to the uh, in inbound uh, part and if it, it it is within the core so the router within the core or within the center of a company again it is uh, communicating right routing forwarding switching and so and so forth right so there are two different uh, characteristics behavior and so we are actually uh, simulating going to simulate the behavior be because uh, the communication remains same in most of the scenarios so uh, we can also introduce communication for example i can choose different uh, scenarios where I have to perform routing uh, by using certain set of protocol and then uh, forwarding by using certain set of policies so although we can also simulate the uh, communication and uh, because most of the time if we talk about the behavior so we can also uh, have an idea about the communication or it remains the same right so uh, we are actually going to create different topologies when we talk about the cellular communication so when we have a cell so within that cell we have to be uh, careful or we have to define that how the uh, cell elements or the cell nodes how they are going to interconnect with each other for example in ad hoc networking or maybe in case of uh, cellular network when different uh, nodes they are communicating with different so what what topology uh, they are going to follow so this is very important and then uh, of course we are actually interested in order to perform certain events that happen under under a certain load so for example we are going to change the bandwidth right so now we are interested in the behavior that now after uh, what uh, impact uh, we can have on the underlying topology if we change the bandwidth right or uh, if we change the uh, either there is some uh, reduction in the delay or maybe there is some change in the jitter so then we have to analyze the events right so of course we will be plotting we will be uh, calculating we will be performing certain data collection and data processing activities in order to understand the behavior so uh, it's actually a discrete event simulator right so uh, it worked at the packet level so that is one of the key difference when we talk about the ns2 that it's uh, a packet based simulator not the flow based blaze simulator right so when we have to perform the flow based uh, simulation so we have to some choose some other tool so it's a packet level simulator so each uh, event uh, so uh, whenever we trigger a packet so that is considered an event right so, so you can see this is a fundamental uh, trigger so uh, it support lot of different protocols lot of different topologies and a lot of different uh, mechanisms right so like uh, when we talk about the protocols it support TCP transmission control protocol UDP FTP HTTP and DSR so uh, the beauty of this uh, NS2 is that we can also simulate uh, wired network in addition to the wireless network. We can also have the mixed scenario where we have the core that is uh, designed uh, by using wired technology and uh, the, uh, the, the uh, infrastructure that is built over this core is wireless in order to support mobility or maybe some other features right so uh, primarily it is developed for Linux uh, or Unix environment but now we can have a uh, version of this NS2 on Windows so we can use uh, NS2 on Windows but we have to configure uh, a tool that is Segwin right uh, okay so these are the installation steps so we are actually interested in the installation because uh, uh, we have to use this tool uh, in order to have some simulation scenarios so 
uh, as mentioned that uh, it's support uh, it can be installed it can be used uh, by using Windows as well as Linux right so let's talk about the Windows installation so they should not be XP because uh, we can uh, use on any Windows Windows XP Windows 7 or Windows 8 right so first of all uh, we need to have certain dependencies and Sigwin that is uh, actually a Linux emulator that actually provide the Linux environment onto the window or you can say Linux emulator uh, on Windows system then we are going to uh, install NS of course how and installation of Sigwin then installation of NS2 and then we will be talking about the installation of NS2 on Linux right so here uh, is the website uh, where we have to download right or you can uh, also take a look at the tips right so Sigwin right so it's a Linux like environment a Linux emulator and we can use this emulator onto the window so uh, sometime we need some application uh, that uh, actually are based on Linux and uh, we can use this emulator in order to have this environment and we can use this uh, those we can install those uh, actual actually uh, applications that are Linux based onto the Windows right so okay so first of all uh, we will be downloading this segment right so it has to be downloaded so I have taken some of the uh, screenshots so I will be sharing those screenshots with you so here we have uh, Sigwin, Sigwin uh, downloaded, right? So setup is downloaded, and then we have to launch it, of course, right? So maybe there is uh, another version, but uh, you can use the latest one that is available, right? So there are different sources uh, where you can download the Sigwin. Okay, so uh, here uh, you have to mention these. Uh, root directory right so normally it's uh, by default uh, on the uh, partition where windows is installed in the folder is sigwin right so and th now uh, here is the uh, selection so the packages which we are going to so my recommendation is you should select all packages so you have no problem when uh, we are using NS2 because we need certain uh, graph plotters and some other uh, visualiz visualization uh, applications in order to launch the NS2 and then uh, we have to mention the local so after the downloading then we have to launch in order to install so of course uh, here we are actually the, there are a lot of different uh, mirrors from where you can download the segment so you can choose accordingly and here we have the installation right so for installation you choose you have to choose the so again first you have to choose uh, when you are downloading the packages and then uh, whenever the download downloading is finished you have to mention the packages again right so whenever uh, uh, the installation is completed right so you can see the icon on the desktop system right okay and then after that you can install the NS2 on Sigwin right so uh, all in one uh, package you can use uh, the but uh, we uh, actually prefer NS2 because there is a version 3 available so as this version is more stable uh, according to my opinion so we will be using this version and after that uh, we will go to the uh, after downloading we will uncompress right unzip and then we will go into the directory and then we will uh, execute this command in, in order to perform the installation so here are some of the installation screenshots right 
and here you can see the installation is completed right okay and you can see different directories and this this is the bash rc where the, uh, we have to mention the path so you can see the path right uh, and s2 uh, for library for uh, right so here is the path for otcl right okay So now we can launch NS2, right? So we also have, so uh, actually, the, uh, if we talk about the NS2, the core is written in C, or uh, some of the functions, they are written in C++. And we have different protocols, different nodes, uh, different links, and different other network uh, para elements. So uh, those actually are be being coded in C and C++, right? So in uh, latest version, that is three most of the uh, nodes most of the elements networking elements they are coded in, by using c++ but uh, the core actually of ns2 is written in c so uh, we have different functions different protocols and uh, different elements network elements nodes so in order to uh, connect all those uh, nodes or you can say in order to glue all those different nodes different uh, routers, different links, we need some sort of scripting language, right? So uh, TCL, the scripting language, in order to glue all those uh, uh, different elements in uh, whenever we have to construct a network and then we have, uh, we need some sort of scheduling and uh, uh, synchronization, right? So uh, actually TCL is being used in order to join or glue all those different elements in, in for a particular civil nation scenario and uh, here we have the installation on Linux right so you can see we have to download and then after that uh, after the downloading so this is the uh, installation on Fedora right and here you can see that we can extract so after the extraction we can paste the uh, directory uh, into our desired location and now we have to open the terminal right so this is the key command uh, dot and this is the forward slash install and you can see that we have uh, installation uh, so after uh, so here we have to we want to view the hidden files in order to make some entries in dot bash rc file that is the path file so here you can see that bash rc and we can put the path of the underlying ns2 installed directly into the bash rc now we have to validate right so after the in installation you can see we have the validation and you can see it actually perform different tests right so you can see different tests tests are being performed and you can see this message test output agree with the reference output right so it's mean installation is successful now I will show you this segment so you can see uh, this is Windows 8 and I'm going to launch segment over here so if I will write uh, so here this is the sig1 right and let me show you so I want to show you uh, NS2 that is installed on Ubuntu right
so on Ubuntu we have NS2 so you can see that uh, we have the NS2 prompt over here so if I open another terminal so I can also use so this is the uh, network animator that is also a part of NS2 right so uh, if you want to in install uh, NS2 on Ubuntu so there are a lot of different options you can use first if you have uh, 10 or the version of Ubuntu before 10 so you can use a package manager that is Synaptic and you just have to mention uh, uh, NS2 and it will install all the dependencies by yourself right and if you are uh, going to install Ubuntu or uh, uh, NS2 on Ubuntu 12 or maybe the version afterwards so here is the software center right and let me so here I can use just Ubuntu 1 Let me uh, finish this. So you can use Surface Center in order to install uh, NS2 on Ubuntu. So I suppose uh, that's all together in order to finish today's uh, lecture. So that's all for today's lecture. So today we talked about CRC algorithms. So we, we have three different types of uh, algorithm uh, when we talk about CRC. Uh, that is uh, modular 2 and then polynomial. We can also use digital logic uh, based algorithm. And then uh, we talked about ECC. And uh, after that we have discussed uh, two type of uh, encoding and decoding schemes. These are block codes and we can also have uh, convolutional codes. So uh, we have another uh, kind of code that uses actually both block and convolutional codes that is the turbo code and we talked about the turbo codes its uh, advantages and the resources that are required uh, in order to implement the turbo cores and we have also discussed the application area of the turbo cores and finally we talked about the simulator uh, that is a network simulator that is important when we talk about the networking communication and uh, uh, different parameters that are relevant to those different networks and protocols and uh, different applications even so we can uh, have different network scenarios and we can use different protocols we can attach different uh, links we can use different topologies so uh, in order to uh, evaluate those different infrastructure network infrastructure we can use the simulator and it's it's uh, uh, very beneficial uh, for us to first simulate and then after that we can implement uh, the underlying scenario or the underlying network so that's all for today's uh, lecture aaj ke liye itna hi kafi hai apna khayal rakhiyega meri taraf se allah hafiz assalam alaikum